Now we go to the real, real, real mind. There's a very deep area there. I think I removed this part. Below the conscious layer and pre-conscious layer, there's a dark area. Because there is some information here, you cannot bring it here. For example, I ask you a question. Uh, when you were about six months old, there must have been a time when you were tiny six months old and you were crying, you were very hungry. Do you remember there was one Friday and you were very small, six month old baby and you were very hungry and you were crying and your mother uh, did not attend you immediately. Do you remember that? No. no. Okay. Then you remember another Sunday when you were about eight months old and you were very hungry and your mother immediately started breastfeeding you. You don't remember. He is telling a lie. Actually, his conscious and pre-conscious mind does not remember. This deeper layer of the mind remembers everything. Every, every experience which happens in your life, right? Every feeling you have and every fantasy you have that is present in your unconscious mind, the deepest layer. There's a lot of information present in deeper layers of the mind and this information which is present at this layer you cannot bring up to conscious mind with simple efforts. Let me tell you. Let us suppose one of you had a very good mother and who was the mother who was taking care of the person very good, feeding him properly, changing the diapers in time and emotionally keeping the baby very comfortable, you may not remember. But your unconscious mind must be remembering that, those group of experiences. And because when you were just one year old and if your primary caretaker or mother was very good to you and she was giving good care, care to you, at that very time your whole world was only your primary caretaker. At that very time, your whole world was just your mother. You never knew at that very time that what was happening in other countries, what was happening in the wars. You only knew if mother is good, everything is good. If mother is not good, nothing is good. You remember that? Now, those times actually you have forgotten. But your, your unconscious mind has not forgotten those experiences. Now, if you were treated very well, during your first year of life, you have been treated very well. It means that those experiences which are present over here, they are not forgotten and they are still driving your behavior. Let me tell you how. When during first year of your life, you were taken good care, you develop a trust to your mother that whenever you need your mother is there. When you are in trouble, your mother is there. Whenever you are hungry, your mother is there. Whenever you are wet, your mother is there. So your little unconscious mind thought that whole world is good. And as you decided at that very time, you, your mind started trusting the mother, right? That those group of experiences are still in unconscious mind and now you are still carrying those experiences with you. And now if you need to trust someone, those experiences will help you to make the decision that you should trust or you should not trust. There are other people who are unfortunately in their first year of life not treated well. And at that very time, when they were not treated well, they thought mother is not predictable. Mother is not trustworthy. And their unconscious mind with those negative experiences is so strong that today, when they are going to make a deal, their unconscious mind is telling them not to trust. Now you may be thinking, how our mind can be so full that project the experiences of first year of life and mother experiences to the rest of the world? Answer is that your unconscious mind does not think in a logical fashion. Your unconscious mind does not think in a logical fashion. This is number one reality. Number two, real logical thinking is conscious mind. 
unconscious mind does not think in a logical fashion. Then there is another special thing about unconscious mind. Unconscious mind does not have a concept of past, present and future. When you are sitting here, you can think about that these are the experiences of my present life. You may think there are some experiences which happen in the past. You may fantasize something about future. But this all activity is pre-conscious and conscious mind. The real, the big layer of the mind, the unconscious mind does not have a concept of past, present and future. Whatever happened in your past, all information which is present here is not considered as past experiences. Unconscious mind keeps them as present. Another trouble with the unconscious mind. Unconscious mind cannot differentiate between fantasy and reality. Unconscious mind cannot differentiate between fantasy and reality. Is that right? Whatever you fantasize for your conscious mind, you know it is not real. But for unconscious mind, it is as real as real experiences. So what I'm telling you about unconscious mind, it's a big storehouse of information. All of you have unconscious mind with lot of information. All your life, whatever good experiences or bad experiences you have, whatever good feelings you had or bad feelings you had, whatever good fantasies you had or bad fantasies you had, whatever happened, happened in your past, that is buried in your unconscious. And many of those things are buried so deep that with your special effort, even by your effort, you cannot bring most of this information to unconscious mind. So you may think that you have forgotten those things, but your unconscious has not forgotten those past experiences, past feelings, past fantasies. It has just buried them. And it has buried those all, all experiences, buried them as alive. Normally we have concept, we bury something that is dead. But whatever is buried in your unconscious is not dead. It is buried alive. And it is still today, right now is working there. And it is still controlling your decisions of today. For example, I am the same teacher to all of you. But do you think all of you like me in the same way or different way? Different way. Some of you may like me very much. Some of you may like me just little bit. And even some of you may hate me for no good reason. Why? Maybe problem may be your relationship in the past with your father. For example, if your father was very good with you in your life, then any other significant person come in your life, you will try to have positive experiences. And if you have some very negative experience from your father, you find a difficulty even to adjust with your teachers. The reason being, you may find that same teacher you may have the same teacher, but all of you may have different feelings about him. Problem is not with the teachers. The difference is in your unconscious previous experiences. Of course, some teachers are good because they activate good things of your unconscious mind. And some are really not good because they activate really not good things from your mind. Right? But you have to remember that today, whatever you did with the people or with yourself, you say that you did it logically, but actually you were controlled by unconscious mind. And this is the real control of your behavior. And this real control does not think in a logical way. That is why sometimes under the same circumstances, people may have different behaviors. Is that right? So is that clear to all of you? That basically personality consists of all your patterns of behavior, your patterns of emotional life, and patterns of your thoughts. But why different people have different personalities? Because they have different unconscious mind. Am I clear?